my name is Dan Harden, and we are here to announce the winners of the commercial equipment category for the Core 77 Design Awards for 2015. And I'm here with my esteemed jury members, Bill Evans, Sam Lucente, Mike Gallagher. We have been working all day long scrutinizing all these entries. Thank you all for the submissions. Uh, we've looked at a ton of great work today, and we're super excited to announce the winners. So we're going to start with the student category. And the runner-ups are the first category. Well, it's a cat the student category, of course, as I mentioned. We're doing something a little bit unusual here. We've actually selected we're a- We're breaking the rules. Breaking the rules, as we should do. The, there is a fantastic project that was done by a group of students at the Umea Institute. And it's a group of mining equipment projects that consisted of, Mike, do you want to talk about these? Sure. So, um, to, for clarity, you may, have, you may have said this, but these are runner-ups. And so, uh, four outstanding projects that, it was Sam's idea, he says, why don't we gain these things together? It's so good, and, and they're all unified, and they all did uh, similar research. So that's what we did. We're throwing them together, as um, um, saying all of them uh, in the mining projects um, are worthwhile. So the four are the Ventec, uh, the Rock Crusher, the auto loader and the scoop tram, and um, a lot of good research in the mine, uh, 11 hours north of uh, the university, the largest mine, if I understand it correctly, in the world, uh, where they uh, process iron ore and have to process the rocks, and it's, it's dangerous, and there's a lot of safety issues. And so we saw innovation, we saw good design. I mean, we saw serious industrial design work, uh, model making, um, you know, they, they made these things, uh, presentations yeah, to the client. Yeah, also uh, incredible collaboration across the team. Each, each student taking on a different aspect, you know, such as rock crushing or scooping and filtering out the rocks. Um, but what you saw is, is, you know, incredible collaboration in the sense that uh, the overall aesthetic works well, um, the, the solutions, uh, as Mike said, it went really deep in the process, really deep. Um, you could see that, um, you know, that the, the process was strong across each of, each of the individual units, but then they really came together as a whole, and that's why we decided that uh, each of these, you know, they stood on their own, yet they were even stronger as a team. And um, so lots of great coordination and collaboration, both at the university level in that, in, you know, that whole program, you could see that, but, but also just uh, individually and, and across these team members. I also enjoyed the fact that this group of students took on a problem set that is kind of an unsung hero, going down into a mine I'm thrilled that this group of students were brave enough to go solve some of these very difficult problems. And they showed a lot of creativity, a lot of innovation, some, and a lot of unification across the solution. So that, that tells us that there was a lot of crosstalk and good communication among the different groups to create an outstanding collective solution. That's why we're taking these four and we're merging them into a single runner-up solution. Yeah, and the, the, another thing that really stood out is um, they, they communicated the solution very well. So just the, the actual presentation the visuals, of the mock-ups, yeah. the process work, the design research. Yeah. Yeah. And like Dan says, we wish you, we knew your names, <laughs> but uh, they're absent, absent from us. So uh, hats off to you. And yeah, thank great. you for being makers. We saw people cutting cardboard. We saw people in the shop making models, beautiful models, it's spray nice. painting. I mean, it was really uh, refreshing to see that. Yeah, going so. from CAD to three-dimensional forms, and, and you know, that's how these forms come together. You have to, you have to touch them, feel them. And even the uh, walking through the scenarios, you know, the, the safety, the, the guy, you know, simulating somebody getting hit over the head with a rock, and then how do you deal with that emergency? But, but it makes it visceral, it, it engages you, you know, really makes you live 
you know, the experience and, and get, get close to the user. Very impressive. Yeah, nice job. Great Thank work. You. Yep. Okay, our next runner up is the Synchrony Music Therapy device. It is, you know, you have to see the video to understand this thing. It is this almost this visceral sensation. It's almost like a piece of musical instrument. It meets technology. Um, everyone should go check it out, look at the video. It's, um, it has a certain almost, uh, imagine a bowl with a touch plane on it that's very simple and very plain. It reminded me of like a, a uh, one of these Buddhist bowls, a uh, singing bowl that um, has a certain craft and quality that I really enjoy. It was very poetic and beautiful to me. And yeah, and that, the experience was nice. Yeah, and that, the object itself, you know, it's this this vessel for communication of the, you know, autistic children, and uh, the vessel itself is calming and and just just an absolutely beautiful form in terms of material proportion, um, the, you know, then, then the way that the digital element was integrated into it nicely. Like Mike talked a, a lot about the juxtaposition of this beautiful object with the, yeah. the digital it's historic drum like uh, semantic and then the new digital semantic it's got bookends of history right in there and i think it uh, dan even mentioned this has got more use than uh for autism and, and um a friend of mine's daughter is in music therapy and so i've learned a little bit of listening to um, applications of how she helps patients and i think this has has some use there as well Another thing is it's got, got a strong social component. It's designed to get the caregiver and the child, often the parent and the child, together when that's an aspect of autism is a sort of social aspects of it as well. Another thing that's interesting about the product, and this is something that we've seen across a few of the projects in the student category, is how many students these days are playing around with all the modern, easy to use electronics, uh, such as Arduino and so on, to make these incredible early simulations. Uh, some of the students were very revealing to their process and that helped us understand what people were thinking as well. But we could see that this is this particular project from Art Centre. They mocked it up, it was mocked up to play music to, so that you could actually feel the experience early on. You could see it in the video. And the same thing went for the, so a lot of the projects from the Umeo as well. They were using a lot of electronic simulations. That are now yeah, that's a trend that we were definitely, definitely yeah. seeing in the submissions and even from our own travels around universities. What, is, what happens when a designer or creative are giving um, electronic devices and sensors like Arduino or, or again, the like, um, and the creativity come out and how you can merge that with traditional industrial design, design thinking type of research patterns. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. The result is fine art mixed with technology that is soft and friendly, and it's obvious that the technology is sort of taking a backseat to the experience. The result is very humanistic and very refreshing. So nice job. Yep. Yeah, and uh, as Bill was alluding to, the the um, just the quality of the student submissions overall. Um, I mean, we we these are the two runner ups, but but just overall the mm. quality was. And it was amazing. Really Some of the amazing. projects were two week, three week projects. Yeah. And Some yeah. were yeah. semester Sorry projects, me. and uh, you know, it really is quite amazing what the you students are able to churn out in such a relatively short time. So. Those of us in the commercial world, it takes years to get some products to market, so it's great to see these refreshing, relatively quick projects. Yes, very good. It was a difficult selection. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. Okay, so our winner for the student category of 2015 Commercial Equipment in the Course 77 Design Awards <laughs> Same thing. is the <laughs> Unified Neonatal System. And I wish I knew your name, but <laughs> you're from Umea. Two names. Yeah. Two names. Two names. Um, this is a, it's a device used in a neonatal ward, and it has a collection of components and offers different features and different utility to help in the care, neonatal care. Uh, again, Folks should look at the slides. There's some fantastic detailing, some great problem solving. We love the way that the components were organized in a top deck and that top deck transformed into a working tray. 
um, extraordinary resolution on details, the cabinetry work, thinking about even how it would be made. It's, it was beyond student work, quite honestly. And for that, we lauded it highly. Yeah, and grant, granted, uh, you know, this, this didn't have to go through all of the challenges of production and engineering and, you know, that, that industrial designers and user interface designers and, and all different kind of designers real work world. through. Yeah, the real world. <laughs> Cross-functional houses. But, <laughs> but as you look at this, this, you know, as Dan was saying, this strikes you as just a really professional design. I mean, it just, it exemplifies, you know, just great student work. And, and it's, it's also a very integrated design, right? So even attention to not only the logo, but the typography on, on the equipment itself, on the model. Um, you know, it just, it just speaks to everywhere, the, yeah, sensitivity yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Well, every the, detail was addressed. Yeah. I mean, the connectors, the... Yeah, yeah the, that deep, uh, comprehensive design, right? That, that integrated the hardware, the software, um, you know, really well thought out from a, a user point of view. It also, sure, Bill, you got a well, it, it also addresses, uh, you know, if you go into the average uh, neonatal unit or hospital ward, people look like they're hooked up to a refinery. They've got so many <laughs> pipes coming in and out of them and wires. And I think that by integrating the, the, the wiring and uh, tubing that's going to go to this, this child, this baby, I think it really helps minimise the apparent uh, amount of uh, sort of connectedness. Uh, this, this, obviously, the, 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 the baby under care is very connected, but because you can't see all the bulky connectors and it just basically turns into this giant umbilical of a whole bunch of uh, plumbing going to the baby, it helps reduce its impact. It's still a clean, uh, a simple aesthetic, which I think works very well and would fit in in a whole variety of different situations. But I like the way that it, it makes it just simpler and just that little bit more friendly and a little bit less, in a way, a bit less techno technological. Um, yeah, little yeah. details like when the cabinet doors close, there's just a thin blue band. It just looks friendly and gentle, which is very appropriate for a neo neonatal ward, especially. Yeah, and that, you know, again, that, that's something that you see done by, you know, really good professional designers, that kind of layering, that discovery right. of, of uh, design details. And, and to see that in student work was just yeah, was really impressive. There's no part of it that's status quo. Everyone thing was thought, okay, this is not just a straight line or an edge. How, how do I make more of it and how can I make it unified? Frankly, is a bit of process as far as we're concerned, uh, it was unanimous. It was easy, nothing, we, we didn't have any debates about that. It was tougher to decide the, the runners up and that's why we gave a lot of uh, honorable notable. mentions. Yeah. Or notable, yeah. sorry. And, um, and I know there may be a few sour grapes from some students because uh, two of these projects are master level, um, but certainly not on the notable. And uh, frankly, that's what the category calls for, is what is the best student work? So let that be a driver for motivation for and everybody. That's, that's a really good point. The notables are fantastic too. As jury members, this is so difficult to select three or four top <laughs> awards. You know, there's, a, there's just a lot of very good work down here. So. Great job, everybody, and yeah, yeah. very impressive. Stay encouraged, well stay passionate. Enter again next year. Keep going. <laughs> Show us great design. Come work Thanks for so us. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Come work for us. Okay. Exactly. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to start by announcing the first runner-up, and that is the Starkey Hearing Technologies Halo Hearing Aid, and. Who would like to talk about that first? I, I can pitch in. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the hearing aid category is uh, moving towards uh, app-based products, and this is one of the first contenders in that area. There's quite a few of them. And I think that what, what um, we liked as judges about this was that although it's a very conservative category, you know, if you look around at hearing aids, they tend to be somewhat the samey. It tried to move the category forward in a, a, a slightly more consumer electronics fashion, uh, make a little bit more of a simple design statement. It's a lot less cluttered because it's an app-driven product. It you, makes good use of the way it splits up the color, the color um, uh, uh, parts between the product, allowing for more customization for users. And we really like the integration with the app. There were some great features on the app, 
I think a lot of research went into thinking about what that should be, as I'm sure it did as well with the forms. And I think we feel that it, 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 pushed, the, the, um, it pushed the category forward uh, a, sm a small amount, you know, in a, a, a good way. Uh, it's very hard to move that category very far along, and I think it's made some great progress there. And it'll be, uh, I'm sure it's a leading, it, we think it made a good impact as well. I think it's selling pretty well. Does anyone else have Yeah, and I, you know, the other thing here is that they really understood the users. They wanted to kind of take it into this this world where you you know you have all this power in a smartphone. So so you know utilize that power with with the moving all the controls and and uh, giving you actually much more control, more flexibility, and then the hearing aid itself then becomes much simpler. But um, they took it even a step further and, and gave it, you know, a hearing aid, a, a high-tech kind of feel to it, right? right. So, so with the aesthetic, which, uh, you know, is a challenge, but uh, I think they did a great job with that. Yeah, I appreciate the, the fact that it is, well, it is very small. And because of its usage intimacy, you know, it sits right behind the ear. It's organic. It feels almost like a little a bean or something that is from nature, perhaps. And the simplicity certainly is evident in every single little detail: the parting lines, uh, the little fasteners, the color, the transitions of the surfaces. Just it's well done. Yeah, and there's some good things on the app as well. We noticed that it's got a, some features in there that have been really thought about from a design point of view like making it more convenient to change settings according to where you are. So, for instance, when you're in a restaurant, it remembers the location of the restaurant and whatever setting you had it on. When you go back to that restaurant, it will automatically go back to that setting. And I think it's lots of little design features like that that, make, that, that move this category on, get people to appreciate a sort of slightly higher standard of design. And of course, as the demographic shifts, you know, and as the, the baby boomers move through, you've got people who've you know, traditionally that category is quite old, you know, some of the products have been around uh, 10, 15 years. And I think people want something new, a little bit fresher, uh, a little bit more in line with consumer electronics, but it's something that you wear as well. So it has to have this kind of organic feel to it. Yeah, yeah great. Our next runner up is the General Electric Revolution CT. Beautiful CAT scan system. It has, uh, it's a large device, of course, CAT scans are big. But this one is nice. It looks approachable. It's it's. Uh, I can't say that I want to go inside one, but it's um, it's definitely approachable. It's nice to detail. There's a, a harmony, a symmetry, and um, nice use of materials. We enjoy even the addition of wood in this this rather you know, this industry has become somewhat conventional in its use of a lot of pressure form beige panels, and here we see exquisite little aluminum details, and, and the, the wood, as I mentioned, um, nice parts, good lighting elements, uh, fine yeah, they, detailing. Yeah. I mean, it's they, a mature, sorry, I was yeah. going to say it was a mature product category, right? So there's been a few generations of this, so a lot of process, a lot of investment, a lot of time uh, into this, so it, so it should be good, but um, it looks highly technical, highly precise, but um, they're dealing with you know the psychological factors uh, and there are many elements in there that, that deal with that, but uh, personally speaking, when we would walk into uh, have a procedure done like this, and this is in the room, they're dealing with, uh, you know, what is that reaction? And, and to me, there's just, uh, of course, a lot of this is the designer kicking in. There's just a lot of reassuring comfort aspects that this thing has been thoughtful. This is, this is not an afterthought. And um, you know, we could take all afternoon talking about some of the the precision details that uh, they've thought through. Yeah, but, and, and, and it's, you know, design is about solving problems and there's many ways to approach this and, and the status quo in this space was, well, to make these, you know, more empathetic lets you solve the morphous forms. But in fact, um, you know, the designers did a lot of research, really deep research, and um, out of that, they realized that we we should minimalize this form. You know, we we should um, push the technology, and uh, it's pretty amazing how 
they were able to work closely with engineering based on all this deep user understanding to take it in a completely different direction where, you know, where the competition has gone and that resulted in a lot of success in the marketplace. Yeah, and, a, yeah. Statement of design and design process, it's, it's evident. And we looked at, we took the time to um, research some of the competitor, competitive units and so, um, you know, there's a lot of credibility in this space, but they, they have a credible product. But also a challenge is that these products are going to be in the field for a long time as well. So it's true of the mm -hmm. current category, they've been, Multiple I'm sure lives, these yeah. products have design lives in excess of 10 years. So it has to have a certain timeless quality to it too. And in the same way that the forms were going soft to make them a little less intimidating, I think they used the wood and uh, some of the aspects of it just to try and take the edge off the technology a bit as well. And a neat little trick with putting a graphic inside the actual tunnel which is one of those sort of puzzle graphics where you look at it and you've got to try and figure out what's inside it. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a modest thing to do, but it's just a, trying to add a, a, a slightly distracting element to, to patients that may be somewhat intimidated by what they're being put through as well. Yeah, and certainly and your comment about taking the edge of the tech, off the technology is, is certainly one of its primary achievements, in my opinion. If you take the skins off of these devices, they are... Well, it's loaded with a frightening amount of technology and, and just in, incredible engineering. But it's been made to look easy and simple. Yeah, and, and um, you know, and to, to, create, to create a beautiful design for an object this big, as many designers out there know, is, is challenging, right? And, and uh, as, you, as we critique this form, and we looked at the details, you kind of step back. There's a lot of nice use of symmetry, the way the, way, uh, the table is integrated into the overall mm -hmm. form, the way it's positioned, the use of materials, you know, beyond the, the natural. Well, the counterpoint is we also picked at some of those, those things, right? right. Which, is, which is why it's not the overall winner. Right there, there's you know we debated some of the use of materials, some of uh, the distinction between the semantic of the bed and the the semantic of the the imager. But um, so uh, yeah, it's yeah, and a few of those details that Mike is referring to the the control panel. We had some trouble with these gem-like buttons that were yeah, jewel-like, yeah. jewel-like that were supposed to be more tactile. Eh. Yeah, <laughs> not so tactile. Sure yes. <laughs> but on devices like this, it's, it's often more difficult to get the big parts to work right. The bed, the layering of the materials, and the faceplate of that main unit, it's just, it's well done. Yeah, and, and you know, they, they put a lot of thought into that. Right, and, and you know, in terms of the, the user research and, and the focus on empathy, right, even though the controls weren't working for us in terms of the, the aesthetics, the, the the placement of the controls and the tactile aspect of the control so that you know the operator can touch touch the controls with their hand but their eye and their focus is still on the patient you know which the patient at that time is is you know undergoing a lot of anxiety and so just little details like that that again came out of a lot of sound user research um, yeah, we are we couldn't see all the research, so we're, we are you know like all jury have to read between the right. lines. But for example, is is a, a jewel the right semantic to be touching for tactile reference? And uh, you know, was it really a gem? It looked like it was lost in some in between space of of what it should be and what it was trying to be. So. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit more background into what the designers were thinking there would be helpful to us, but yep. we're allowed to be critical. Nice job. Yeah, it's a good program. Overall, excellent, phenomenal, yeah. Our third runner-up is the Magic Carpet Motion Mount for Cameras Used by Independent Filmmakers. Again, I would refer everyone to the imagery. It's a piece of equipment that is very machine-like. And we even have sound effects to go with this. <laughs> what you got there? Oh, you got to the mic. <laughs> the magic carpet, right? <laughs> so, Samson shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Since oh. I disrupted this video with a uh, 
a little background music. And we have we have uh, more entertainment on the next one as well. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, this a motion mount for cameras. You know, um, as Mike Mike was talking about some of the resolution of form and things like like that on on the previous you know entries. Um, this magic carpet, um, we were just really impressed with. Very appropriate. Just deep, comprehensive design. And um, as you read through it, like sometimes as you read these award submissions, you kind of see which piece was written by marketing, which piece was written <laughs> by engineering, and which piece was written by design. And, and what was amazing is that uh, you know, that, that deep integration of form and function was really evident in the, in the design, but it also came through in the entry and the way they talked about mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, the, it, it was really this seamless integration that, that struck us. And you can tell that a lot of those innovative details stem from understanding how videographers use their products and what they're looking for. There's a lot of modularity, there's a lot of good solutions in, in detailing. There's nothing better than a, a product or a machine, especially, that not only has the aesthetic, but a lot of the other affordances, you know, mm -hmm. something goes click and snap, and when, it, when you uh, maybe, you know, deploy a, a leg or a, a feature that, that these clearly have in them, it's... Um, yeah, you said it was uh, somatic to the industry. In fact, Dan, question, is that is that really a cut above? So we searched the competitive product, and we were convinced it's a cut above. Yeah, yeah, most, the, the, yeah, 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 most of the products in this category, and this is not a very expensive product, by the way, it should be said, it's in the $300, $200, $300 for mm -hmm. some of the modules. And if you look around, uh, any of you that use professional camera equipment know that quite a lot of it is very bitty. It's got standard off-the-shelf clamps here, it's got standard rails. Mm -hmm. And I think what these guys did is to integrate those things, and whoever was making the design decisions was thinking through, well, mechanically what's happening here, and how can I integrate that, that clamping action here so that it fits in in the whole, the whole theme of the product. I think that's a, a, a commendable thing to do on a product. Yeah, same with Googling customer goes. reviews and getting good results too, so yeah, yeah. we yeah, have that internet to help. I also like that it's a great integration of design and engineering. Yeah. You don't see where one stops and the other starts. It's, and, it's fully and, integrated. Yeah, and to do that, as, as Bill was saying, at, at this kind of price point, right, that's, that's just where design wins, you know, it just helps right. the company tremendously. It also shows that this product is not the hero offering to these users. It's the, all about the camera that they typically use and, mm -hmm. and love. This is like the best supporting actor. <laughs> and that's the kind of award we're giving. It's a great supporting actor product. Yeah. And they showed, they gave us examples of the video examples, which we're neat to watch. And the, yeah. you know, now, now it's maybe a good time to just talk about the entries in general, right? In, mm. in, in this whole category, the commercial equipment category. I mean, I, well, it's I, worth saying straight off the bat that the people may be saying, well, why so many medical products <laughs> won awards? Well, the reason was there were actually really quite a significant number of medical products entered, and that a lot of them were very strong candidates. That's as right, well. more than half. Uh, but there are a lot in the notables that are not medical products as well, so. Do look over some of those there. There were some tough decisions about what exactly to include in the runner-up category, but there certainly were a lot of medical and some biotech products there. Yeah, and, and in this category, we felt it was important to really honor every, every definition of design. You wanted great aesthetics, great usability, great experience, good, good social benefits, you know, that really we're looking for the full gamut, in the, in the, especially in the commercial equipment category. It's not a beauty contest. We were looking for full design solutions. We saw it. We as far as it. trends, did you guys see any trends uh, this this year? It, it was kind of hard. We were, it was pretty eclectic. I yeah, think. it was eclectic. There wasn't. I didn't see an aesthetic emerging. Or, well, I mean, I think, it's hard in this. Uh, well, one thing I would say is that I think that there is an emergence amongst both medical and biotech industry for. Uh, desire to project brand, brand values yeah. of the products and I think that there were some more or less successful attempts at that. There were some, in the notables you'll see some products that are looking at uh, branding and brand language conveyed 
very strongly on the products, and we're seeing some of the award winners we've given here do that in as well. An experience. We haven't mentioned, you know, we're, we were cognizant of what is the whole experience of the product and what's the environment. And just like brand is an extension of the product itself, you know, we had talked about that. Certainly with CT scan, it's, it's all about the experience. And, and when you hear the winner, it's about the experience as well. And that's yeah, especially yeah. because in commercial equipment, it's often about work, mm. productivity, efficiency, performance. And any product that we felt not meet that criteria, well, so, we, yeah. we just we dismissed. Yeah, and, some, yeah, yeah. and some of the notables, for instance, uh, there's a few uh, sort of very industrial tools in the notables, for instance, things like welders, crane controllers, things like that. And they're a much bolder, sort of chunky aesthetic that seemed appropriate to us, I think. For the rough and tough tumble of what the it, What's going on there. Yep. And that makes judging actually quite difficult because yeah. you're not you're not judging very similar kinds of products there's a certain fineness say for instance to the detailing of the of the magic carpet it's got a certain integrated look that would be hard to pull off on a really rugged product that's being used in the cold with gloves on your hands and these kinds of things so we were trying to look across the gamut and understand each how each product was individually trying to tackle its problems and what was suitable for that for that market. yeah we, i mean just the scale range from hearing aids the next slide up was the genie lift, you know, that brought a man up to a, up a telephone pole. Right, right. So it's it's mm. quite a range. Mm. Well, I I guess one thing we paid close attention to is you know how technology is integrated into these these this equipment, right? And uh, and we saw good examples of that, not so good examples of that, um, and then. Was that technology driven by deep user needs? Was it, how did it relate back to the brand? Um, you know, that, that was- The success of the UI is so vital to the overall judging of the product and, and that's yeah. clearly a trend too. And I yeah. would say that generally speaking as judges, it would be, it would be help people if they spent a lot of time on a, a virtual UI, um, a digital UI, if they could provide perhaps a bit more background, we didn't see mm -hmm. as much of that, it would have helped us you know, it's one thing to say that it's got a good UI and it would be useful to see a bit more of what that actually means, you know, what were the problems that had to be solved by it. And some, some entrants made a good job at doing that and some probably may have sold some of their designs a bit short by not going into as much detail for that. Yeah, we had to suss some of that out by going to the websites and finding some of the, the UI examples. Right, right. Yep. And also, you know, how do you actually integrate that technology, right? And, you know, what, what form does that take on? Like if, if you're integrating a smartphone into a device, you know, does it does it dominate the device, or you know, what what kind of role does it play? Um, you know, in the case of the the Starkey hearing aid, it was really a nice integration of the two. They, you know, the hearing aid worked on its own. You know, yet it it was still connected to the the device aesthetically. Um, yeah. You know, but in other cases, you know, the technology was, it was almost as if it was like jammed in into right. the device, right? right? Which, uh, you know, kind of brought that, brought that down a little bit, so. We were on? Yeah. Ready for the winner? Okay, finally. Yeah, Dan provided us with some great champagne for uh, the winner here, so. Okay. And the winner is the Da Vinci Surgical System for Intuitive Surgical. Congratulations. Beautiful, it's excellent work. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful product. Thoughtful, top to bottom experience. Uh, you know, some of the psychological aspects of what's going on in the room, in the minds of the users, you know, communication between uh, doctor and support staff. Um, you know, the notion of robotics and, and the appropriate use of advanced robotic aesthetics. But on the table, we don't care. So I think well, one so, of the, 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 those of you may be familiar with the earlier Da Vinci robots, basically it's taking these four uh, surgical arms, four robotic arms, and going to have to introduce them basically at the same small spot on, inside the patient and through one relatively few entry points into the body. And uh, this is the next generation of that product. Thank you very much. And uh, this is the next generation, and it's trying to take some lessons learned from the earlier products to broaden out the places where this product can be used and improve its use in, uh, with a very um, 
long list of uh, stakeholders, uh, people setting it up, uh, people working around it, surgeons working at the various aspects. The product itself is essentially two elements. It's the, the surgical console, which the surgeon sits at and actually operates uh, the, the controls that are then copied in miniature, if you like, to the patient cart. And at the actual point of, uh, point of the operation, those um, grosser motions by the surgeon are translated to these tiny motions inside the patient. And it means you have these two different elements. And of course, the, these four surgical arms were previously coming in in a much wider, taking up much more of a footprint. And the design team uh, went back to the drawing board to think about how they could be better configured so as to give some space back in this very tight surgical environment that they're working in. So I think that I'm sure many people contributed to that success, but uh, looking at the entry, it looks like the designers played a big part in really helping drive that. And um, on the other hand, also there's some very complex setup with the product on the patient as well, where there's some challenges about knowing where the tools are aiming at. And so there's certain features that they have to put on, even on uh, the underside of the arms, which is the side the patient would see if they were, were conscious, mm -hmm. where they're trying to help things like uh, there's a laser targeting and there's some markings and graphics that are helping you understand the extent beautiful. of the product. Yeah. So there's really not many uh, stones left unturned, yeah. including a pretty uh, great looking interface uh, on both the cart in terms of they spent some uh, time and money developing um, a very good looking interface there. Again, we didn't get as much details about some of its functionality, but um, it looks like it's, uh, it's, it's had a lot of thought put into it and very, very simple controls on, that, on moving that cart around, which is very, very heavy, the patient, the patient cart. And then obviously the surgeon console itself and they made some subtle uh, fixes as well that you don't see so much as things like here. For instance, it helps with the feeling of presence in the surgery if the surgeon has better audio, so they put better audio in that and things mm -hmm. like that. So lots and lots of little tiny details that they were trying to resolve. And I know how hard it is in a lot of medical companies are so engineering driven, it's sometimes very hard to win design arguments. And I think um, that, uh, I think so that there was a lot of uh, my kudos to the design team for getting some serious design weight into this product that's not just engineering solutions per se. Yeah, um, very I'm, complex product. Yeah, I'm sure it's a very integrated <laughs> team, but it's it's a knockout product. And you know, yeah. with, with all of those great features you just mentioned and the, the human factors, it's, it's very evident. This product to me felt very transcendent. And to me, it was probably the most futuristic thing I've seen all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the video it felt was very much like I was too. looking into you know medical yeah, procedures that. 50 years from now when when technology is doing a better job at surgery than humans do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then as you step back and you look at you look at the form itself, right, and just how complex it is, right, and all the different moving parts. Um, yeah, the first impression of this is kind of this really beautiful integration of part human, part robotic. Yeah. So it, it almost takes on this um, life of its own. So that, that first read from a distance is, is just, you know, it's really beautiful. It's a beautiful it form. And then so in conclusion, we would really like to toast the Da Vinci. Great work. Congratulations. Congratulations. For being and really this toast is not only for one winner, it's to the runners up. We have fantastic notables. This was difficult, I can tell you that. Um, and I would encourage everyone to go check out the video on the student award winners as well. There's some great work done this year by the students. Thank everybody. I want to thank everyone personally for submitting. Uh, we've really enjoyed this. We had a great collaborative discussion today. We had a lot of fun with this. And keep up the great work. This is a great category. I'm so thrilled to see so many designers interested in designing great commercial equipment. It's helping people around the world make their lives better, easier, safer. And thank you for that, too. So, cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers, cheers. everyone that wins it. Cheers. You did no, that. Right? <laughs> <laughs>